it's thought that gives birth to the possibility of one object in time and space causing a, another object in time and space. But experiencing never, never has any knowledge of one thing causing another. Because its experience is not in time. You see, time and space are so profoundly woven into the way we view the world that even when we totally collapse time and space and, and we realize that our experience is made out of this dimensionless and transparent substance called knowing or awareness, thought then pops up and tries to go back to the old model and tries to drag the old model into our new understanding and says, but there must be a cause for the current experience. Cause implies time. It doesn't, we, doesn't have to, does it? Imagine you're a screen, there's a movie going on, two people are, are, are having an argument and are causing each other to say certain things. Yes. The husband causes his wife to say something, the wife causes her husband to say something, yes? From the point of view of these two objects, what the other object does or doesn't say is the cause of what they do or don't say. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the point of view of the person, yes? What about the screen? What is the screen's experience of what is going on? From the point of view of the screen, um, the screen knows itself, doesn't it? it can the screen knows only itself, don't forget. It doesn't yes. know two people. The so the only one person, yeah. one apparent, in other words, the person, yeah. the two people in the movie are only two people from the point of view of mm -hmm. one of the people. Yeah. It's, in other words, it's only a person in the film that knows another person. Is the screen the doesn't know a person or an object, it just knows itself. But is, but is the screen aware that... It's not it's aware of duality, it's not aware of objects not or quite people. What, not quite what I was going to say. Is, is it aware that it is being modulated, that, that something about its nature is in No, is in a, movement from an flow. absolute point of view, no, not even that. It's not right. aware of any, any change within itself, because me. in order to register a change you have to refer to the past. An experience is too busy being present now, to have time to abstract itself from the now and to look back on itself and say, what caused my current appearance? It must have come from the past. It's too busy in enjoying the moment to have time to separate itself out from life and to cause and, and, and to, to create or imagine a separate self in time and space. So thought takes all these, all these if you like, contiguous snapshots and stitches them together into a story. Say so nothing. Exactly. Yes, yes. It's because there's never more than one snapshot yes. present or at a time. Where are all the other snapshots now? That the thought right. is weaving into a story right. called the the continuously existing world. Where are these snapshots? So this that thought is is arranging. Mm. Where, where are they now? There's just the there. current no. snapshot shot. It's only a thought itself that imagines there are lots of other snapshots yeah. and then takes these imaginary snapshots and weaves them together into a continuously existing world. So if I turn and become knowingly aware of my experience, it just is. It just is. Ask and yourself, what is my experience saying about itself? How does experience stand back from itself, turn around and look at itself and say, I am this, I am a chair, I am a person, I am a house? Does, can experience do that, or rather, how would it do that? Only by taking the shape of an abstract thought. A memory or something. And it's that thought that seems to separate itself out from this seamless whole, a thought-made person, um, is precipitated, made out of thoughts, is precipitated within the whole, seems to stand back from experience and look at it and say, it is made of chairs and table and people and selves. Awareness, experience, which means experience, can't do that. It's too, the screen can never stand out from itself and look back and even say, I am a screen. Awareness doesn't know that it is something called awareness because it's not in its own experience. It is too 
totally in the moment ever to rise up and have a single thought about itself think about it every single thing thought says thought is always describing what has just passed by the time thought rises to describe it it's gone thought cannot the only thing thought cannot describe is the now because it rises and the now that it was describing, the, the object that it was describing, has vanished. Thought can say nothing true about experience. Nothing. It's always describing the not now. So from, from experience's own point of view, it doesn't change? Experience's own point of view, yes, it doesn't even know that yes. it is something called experience. It is just too, we could say it's too busy being itself. <laughs> to abstract itself yeah. and call it something it's not it's not something it's not an object it's not even experience it's not what can we say we, we can't say a word about it let alone call it a, a world a person a, a self if it's too it's beyond the ability to put into a, a word or a concept then you certainly can't say whether it changes or not certainly can't say whether it's changing or not you see, as soon as we start, even to say that it is changeless, mm. is to say that awareness is changeless is, is to use a thorn to remove a thorn. Mm -hmm. Because in saying that it is changeless, we're referring to something that changes. Mm. There can't be something that is changeless without there being first something that... Sorry, there can't be yes. something that is changeless without there being first yeah. something that changes. I but f from the screen's point of view, from experience's point of view, it, it is not changing. Mm -hmm. It is too busy being now so. to register the changes, to conceptualize a past when things were different. The result of, of this understanding is to leave us totally plunged into the now. with no impulse to avoid it, change it, or name it unless required for practical reasons. We don't lose the facility to conceptualize experience, but we don't use, we no longer use that ability to defend or aggrandize an imaginary self. We just use it for practical purposes, or for creative purposes. No, t tomorrow you won't take a plane. No. 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 In the ever present now, new thoughts, new sensations, and new perceptions will appear in you. Thought will conceptualize that as I am going to take a plane and fly in time and space to another place. That's what thought has to say about it. But your experience is that you will stay in the same timeless, placeless place, which is the place of awareness. You, awareness, will stay where you always are, not in time, not in space. And you will take the shape of a new flow of thinking, sensing and perceiving. Thought will then abstract from that seamless flow of thinking, sensing, perceiving. Thought will abstract a self in a body that is moving around in a world and it will tell you a story. I am leaving here, getting on a plane, going to another country. But all the time you, awareness, will just remain peacefully in your bed, perfectly comfortable. <laughs> the entire dream will take place in you. <coughs> just like the, the, the night dream does. For the character in the night dream that thought considers you to be that character 
travels all the way around the world, flying back home to Spain or to yeah. But when you wake up, you realize, ah, oh, I was just at peace in my bed all the time. That's how it is for awareness, always at peace in its bed. Everything flows through it. It doesn't flow through time and space. Yes. So just, just all you need to do is, is remain as awareness. And let this colorful drama just flow through you. Don't flow in it. Let it flow through you. <laughs> <laughs>